All right, it's a pleasure to have everyone here. Um, we're gonna go through just some quick stuff and uh, setting up and just exploring Cali. So remember, these are 30 minute mini sessions. And so first, anytime you have a particular OS, the first thing you technically need to do is actually just find out um, kind of what the actual um, operating system is and not just the operating system, but also if it's 32 or 64 bit, you just type in an easy command like this just type this into Google and it's just gonna kind of let you know exactly what this is doing, but this is just an easy item. Your name, dash A, and this will tell you exactly what it does. You're gonna do this actually in um, terminal, and I'll show it to you when we actually um, run it. But first, what you need to do is download Kali. Well, actually, you can run into VM, but if you don't have a VM environment set up, you can do just Oracle virtual box. Go here. Just navigate to this website. Go to downloads. And then download the appropriate item for your particular operating system. And so that's it with there, with that. And then for Kali, type in Kali Linux, Kali.org. And then once you're at Kali.org, once you're here, you can download the actual um, distribution that you need. So we'll just scroll down real quick. Download Kali Linux. And click Download Kali. And then from here, we can find the actual Kali uh, Linux distro that we need. Now, if you're going to download it via torrent, you need some type of BitTorrent client. Um, and, you know, the ISO is, just, ISO is just the image. For those who don't know, you can just download the Im um, image directly. But the torrent is better because it's, it's going to be a little faster than just simply downloading the actual ISO file itself. Um, so I would recommend using the torrent. Now, now, once you have this particular item downloaded, I'm going to go through and kind of explain uh, essentially, how do you set it up in VM, player, and all that other good jazz? All right, so what I'm getting ready to do now is actually pull up uh, my the VM. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to kind of set this up in the Oracle VirtualBox real quick. I'm going to reshare. All right, so what you see now is my virtual box. I already have um, Kali running in there. I'm going to click New. Okay, it doesn't show that. So let me do this. This may be a little bit better. I'm going to share my full screen. All right, so now I'm sharing my full screen. Just pay attention to the item on the right, otherwise, you just see tons of stuff going back and forth. All right, so I'm gonna hit cancel, so you can see. I hit new, I'm gonna type in Kali, test two, type in Linux, and this will pop up, and it's gonna hit, I'm gonna hear for Ubuntu 64. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna just leave it the recommended size. I already have one running, but you wanna choose whatever is gonna be best for you. And then it always has to recommend it. You know, you must have at least eight gigs. <clears throat> going to create the virtual hard drive. I'm going to use a VDI. I'm going to hit next. And then file location. This is just where the file is actually going to be located. Of course, the, in the size, I'm going to hit create. <clears throat> now I'm going to double click here. And what you should see now, drag this over. It's going to ask me where the actual file is at. I'm going to go here to desktop files. I'm going to go to this Kali image that's already been downloaded. I'm going to hit start. And it's going to go through the process of actually um, creating the actual Kali limit, Linux. All right, and so that's what you see right here. So. I'm going to go out of this image and I'm going to bring up my other image. So I'm going to share that with you and we're going to go through at least just a hack and some, just some of the tools. 
So I'm going to now close out of this one. Just power that one off. I'm going to reshare yet again. All right, so what you see here now is pretty much my Kali Linux. This was running here. And what I was telling you earlier in terms of actually finding out about your OS and stuff, simple command, that's all, that's all it is. So this is telling me exactly the distribution. Um, it was telling me the distribution. It's also letting me know what type of process I have. And that's, that's important later when we talk about actually doing items with assembly and stuff like that. Forgive me, I got a little cold. The uh, allergies I've uh, picked up here in St. Louis. All right, so here I am. So I'm at, you know, I'm here at the command line. Command line is fairly easy. Um, I can just click this. This is going to bring up my terminal. Now, at other OSs, you can just hit Control Alt T. It's like in Ubuntu, and it'll bring up terminal as well. Um, and some you just actually have to navigate to the terminal. I'm going to close this, and we'll bring up terminal just a little bit later. All right, so I'm going to go through here. Um, there's a number of accessories that are here. Leafpad is good. I mean, if you're trying to do stuff with websites, and we'll talk about that. This is just for writing, it's just text that are just, I can write simple text here. That's all that is. So then to minimize that. Uh, there's graphics tools, image, document viewer, image viewer, um, ham radio for any of those that do anything with ham radios. Now here are all the Kali Linux tools, and this is the, the stuff that, this is the bread and butter. I mean, you have your office suite, and it's not really an office suite, it's just kind of the bare minimum, some bare minimum programming stuff. Here's Kali, so you have the top 10 security tools, Nmap, uh, what we did the other day was actually install Nmap directly from Terminal, but here's Nmap, Metasploit Framework. Now there's another version of Metasploit, and that's the version you actually have to pay for, I think it's approximately 20000 a year for the license. Um, but Metasploit Framework is kind of the bare bones framework for Metasploit. Uh, should be John the Ripper, uh, OWASP, uh, Zap, SQL Map, and we're actually going to use SQL Map just in a couple minutes. So SQL Map is a pretty good tool. So this here just kind of showing some of the items. Of course, it's, you know, just getting root Cali. Um, this is just letting me know that I'm at root. I'm going to go ahead and we'll use SQL Map, but just not right at the moment. All right, so stress testing. There's hardware hacking. Forensics, reporting tools, uh, system services, stress testing, maintaining uh, access, sniffing, spoofing, exploitation tools, wireless attacks, password attacks, and there's a ton of different items. The best thing to do is actually go through and do it via the GUI. <clears throat> so as I was saying, one of the items that we're actually going to do, we're going to actually um, do use um, one of the items. We're going to be using the um, SQL um, item. So we'll do a quick SQL attack. It's actually SQL map. So what we're going to do first, we need to find uh, vulnerable websites. And so what we're going to do is, this is a quick search. And so actually, you can do this. Actually, that's incorrect. Let me show you this. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring this up. And then I'm going to... Look here, I'm going to see what type of websites are going to give me errors. And so I can just look through here and see what websites are giving me errors. I can just scroll down, see what websites come up. I can say, okay, let me look at this Angel Vest. So I can look at the website. I'm going to refresh it, or I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to see if it comes up with an error. So nothing with an error here. I'm going to keep searching and look for sites that obviously have something, um, some error associated with it. Nothing there. Keep going. I just keep doing this over and over until actually I find something that has an error associated. It's going to say some type of error. All right. So. What you can also do is you can type in this or something similar to this, and you can essentially state that you have an error in SQL syntax, and so I just did the same thing. Um, and so when I did this, it actually brought me to a page, and in this particular page, 
yeah, in this particular page, I was able to actually um, come up with a particular error. It's something I think it's an Italian website. So it brought me here, and so I see something like this. is error, code 8, you know, all this stuff, MySQL. I'm going to refresh it, see if there's something wrong. Obviously, there's something wrong. So what I'm going to do now is copy this item. I'm going to bring up that notepad. All right, so bring up the notepad now, and I'm going to use this to actually run my particular uh, attack and see um, what is going on. All right, so I have this here. I'm going to try to run this. Actually, I need a full website. So let me do this. I'm going to try to run this over here. All right, so I'm going to take that. Oh. Do this. I'm going to bring up my here. And I'm going to start actually going through and going through the command sets and whatnot. All right. So here I'm going to type in SQL map dash u, and then I'm going to copy this website from there. So I have that. And then what I'm looking for is actual databases. So dash dash db. Just a little bit bigger so you guys can see. All right, so now it's giving me a legal disclaimer and it's going to go run through and see where it can pull. All right, so now this particular item is running. And so it's running and it's looking for any type of databases or any issues that are associated actually with that particular website. And you can do this over and over until you find a particular issue. And then once you find those issues, um, then you see actually what databases are actually available. So we'll, just, so we'll just let this keep running real quick.
All right, so this particular tool is just going to continue running. Um, and again, you never sometimes don't get it done on your first website that you find, but you have to keep finding websites that have these particular PHP errors. Um, so you can do these injections, you just keep these maps and injections, you just keep running them over and over and over until you actually find that one particular website that is going to work uh, the way you want to. And then once you get to that particular site, then you can further um, see what type of um, databases are actually there. And then you can actually, you know, find the actual username, password, um, and then from there, you know, navigate as you wish. So this item is just going to continue running, but this is just an example um, of what we can do. So here, just saying it's automatically extending ranges for union query injection technique, um, as there's at least one other potential technique found, and it'll just keep running through. Um, and this is just this particular tool. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to stop it here, and then I'm going to actually um, just share, reshare my screen for those that are actually in the class. Um, and then we'll actually go through some particular websites and actually um, locate um, username and passwords offline and not record it. All right. I will see you guys in just a little bit. Um, you have my Gmail account. So send me a message on Gmail, and we will actually um, link up via live.